Dr. Rudy, thank you so much for joining us on Newsdesk. Good afternoon. Great. Dr. Rudy, I'd like to start with your thoughts on uh, Kenya's assessment of its handling of COVID-19 um, during the conference, the COVID-19 conference that was held on Monday in the country. So I think Kenya did quite a good job uh, initially of uh, uh, containing the disease. So the uh, restrictions were put in place very quickly after the first cases had been uh, announced. Uh, it took a while for the uh, equipment and the training and the beds to be uh, made available. But I think, uh, uh, as we see it, the health system was not overwhelmed as it was anticipated initially. Now we're in the situation that the number of reported cases are, of course, decreasing. Uh, what is not clear as yet is if that decrease is a true decrease of transmission of the disease or if it's just a decrease in the reporting you know, we've had less uh, laboratory tests being done in the last couple of weeks than before. So it is possible that the decreased number that we're seeing is as a result of decreased lab testing. So um, we completely agree with uh, His Excellency, the President, that for now it is too early to actually remove those restrictions that we have on, um, on gatherings, on social distancing, on the wearing of masks, on hand washing. They, those should remain in place because uh, the disease continues to occur in Kenya. It continues to infect uh, people, not only in Nairobi, but really also in the outlying areas. In some counties, we are seeing rising numbers at this time. So it's, it's by no means done as yet, uh, but I think we are in support of what was said by the president. Interesting. You say we could be underreporting now. If I could take you back to earlier this month, I believe the 1st of September, WHO issued a statement warning Kenyans, or Kenya rather, against lowering the COVID-19 guard due to low cases. And yes, we have been reporting low cases, if I could use that word. Are you still concerned about this, especially now after, you know, we relaxed the, some of the regulations that were put in place to contain COVID-19 since Monday? Dr. Rudy. Uh, yes, so we remain concerned because at the moment we're looking at that uh, single indicator or of the number of reported cases. So what would be very, very helpful if actually there was further data that you can tri triangulate with. So if we could uh, be confident about the mortality data, the number of deaths that occurred, uh, if we could have a better look at the laboratory data, not only the positive cases, but also the negative cases to get a feeling for who's being tested. Uh, hospital admissions are important components. So if we see at the same time a, a reduction in hospital admission, a reduction of uh, intensive care unit admissions, that actually supports the idea that the disease is declining. Mm -hmm. That seems to be the case at the moment in Kenya. So it seems to be pointing in that direction, but we do need further data to actually verify that. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about reopening of schools and a lot of people really waited for that bit in uh, the presidential address again on Monday. Uh, a lot of people expecting perhaps a phased reopening of schools and yes, yesterday we did see the CS Education Professor Magoha announce that final year students of our universities and TVETs will be resuming but we are yet to have a full resumption of schools. A lot of people perhaps or rather a lot of people saying that they would want it to be next year January but still there's some who expected the president to talk more on it though he did say that the focus is on how to reopen and not when to reopen let me get your thoughts on that uh, so we totally agree it's very important that we prepare the schools uh, for the reopening so the how is very important uh, WHO UNICEF uh, Red Cross and other agencies have articulated very clearly what the criteria would be for actually the reopening of schools, so what kind of um, disease situation there should be in the country, but also the state of preparedness both of the school system and of the health system. So those criteria are well set out and well articulated. Uh, in fact, the Ministry of Education has published a guideline for the opening of schools, giving the direction to the schools um, on what should be prepared. So I think in terms of guidelines, uh, there is very clear articulation both by um, the UN agencies as well as the Ministry of Education. I think the issue that is still lacking is the implementation of those guidelines. So the making available of actually individual desks or face masks to all learners uh, is quite important. 
Um, we acknowledge, of course, completely that there is a risk uh, to children, to the child, uh, welfare of the children. Uh, many children, of course, are, are struggling at the moment in the situation that they are not at school, uh, in terms of learning, of course, in, so, in terms of social contact, but then also things like school meals sometimes um, and, and other aspects that actually are deficient at this moment. So it really is a balancing act between making sure that the child welfare is taken care of and that the health protection and the health safety is on board. At the moment, we would have also um, encouraged that there's a direction given from, um, from the government in, uh, in the way it is opened. But for now, we are in agreement that the how is very important and that has to be implemented as soon as possible so that the schools can be opened. Okay, uh, Dr. Rudy, I'll ask you to please stay with me. Uh, we need to take one spot story, but I'll be coming to you in a few minutes. So please, Dr. Rudy Eggers, just stay with me. So let's take this story, then we'll be back with the WHO country representative for Kenya. And uh, Frank Lampard missed opportunities as Chelsea crashed out of the EFL Cup against...